Ciao friends, welcome to another video from SQL BI. In this video, we'll show you how to compare metrics for series that do not occur in parallel. That means that you're looking at events that have different start date, so if you try to do a standard time series analysis, you're not going to have a relevant comparison. To better understand this scenario and the challenges in it, let's take a look at the data model together. In this data model, we have information about videos that have been published to a streaming platform, where we're trying to understand how these videos are performing by looking at their views. If we look at the model, we have a single fact table that shows us information about our videos, specifically the views by date. We can understand what video we're looking at by looking at the video ID, which is related to a dimension table that gives us attributes about our videos, like their length and when they were published. We also, of course, have a standard date table. So it's a relatively simple model. When we look at the fact table, we can see that indeed we have our video IDs, as well as for each day, how many views that video has accumulated. In order to better understand this situation to make it a bit more visual, let's take a look at the tablet. What we want to do is we want to understand how our videos are performing over time. We could look at the cumulative views by date, for example, for a given video, to see how many views it's accumulating over time. But the moment we want to compare to another video, then we run into problems. Because other videos will be published at a different period, so the video in orange has been out longer than the video in blue. So naturally, it has more views. It's difficult to be able to do a valid comparison. Instead, ideally, we would want to overlay these lines so that we are performing a more valid comparison between the two videos. We can do this by looking at the cumulative views for the weeks since publication. So if we were to redraw this line, for the orange video, we can still see its cumulative views, but the blue video, the line is overlaid on top. So it's much easier for us to see that the blue video is performing better compared to the orange video at the same point in time. Let's take a look at the report and walk through how we would set this up step by step. As we discussed, if we try to compare the videos by the total number of views, either in this table or the bar chart or any other visual, it's not gonna be a valid comparison. Some videos are a lot older than other videos, so naturally they've accumulated more views over more time. A standardized analysis is going to look at the views by weeks since the video was published. We can easily get this because we have in the videos table, the publication date, and we can just compare this to the date when we are collecting the video views. So the first step is to create a calculated column, which we'll call weeks since publication, where we're going to compute the weeks since the video was published. We need to start by getting the date of publication, which we take from the related videos table, the publish date column, and we next want to compute the weeks by subtracting the date column in our views table from the publication date to get the days since publication, and we just divide this all by seven to get the weeks. We return the result, and we now have our column. So it has the result that we expect. So our next step is to create a dimension table in our model, which we're going to relate to this new column. We create a calculated table, which we'll call weeks, and we'll just get the values from our new column that we created weeks since publication. And we then create a relationship between the column in our new table and the calculated column in our fact table. We can do some cleanup by hiding the calculated column, moving it to the columns display folder, and we're done with the first step. To summarize, what we've done is we've used the video publication date and we've compared it to the date when we're collecting views to calculate the number of weeks since the video was published. In the next step, we're going to use this in a visual, a line chart, to compute the number of views since the video was published so that we can compare two videos in a more fair way. 
So remember, what we want to do is we want to do a comparison of the cumulative views by the weeks since publication. So in order to do that, we need to create a new DAX measure in our model. So we'll create this measure in the views table and we'll call it views since publication. It will calculate the total views where we do a filter over all of the weeks since publication and then accumulating by the weeks since publication using a standard pattern. This will have the cumulative sum of our views by the week since publication. We can now use this DAX measure in a line chart to be able to show these cumulative views by the weeks since when the videos were published. So we'll go ahead and create that line chart next. We'll go in the report view, create a new page, add the line chart, and we'll add the columns that we've added to our model. We add the week since publication to the x-axis and the views since publication to the y, and we can already see this line appearing as we expect. We can filter this using a slicer, for example, by a specific video. So if we add the video title, and we can then select multiple videos or single videos, and we can see that this is changing. But if we add the video title to the legend, this is a really easy way for us to be able to compare two videos. So we can already do the comparison of two videos, very easy to do. But what if we want to take a single video and we want to compare it to the average? Well, to do that, we have to create an additional measure that looks at the average views since publication. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to add a new measure to our model based on this views since publication. We'll call this measure average views since publication. And what it's going to do is it's going to show the average views since a specific date cutoff. So we're only going to include videos that have been published since a certain date. So since the beginning of 2022, for example. And we also want to make sure that we only show uh, values where there are data points. So right now we can see that the, the values are accumulating even if there's no data points, even if it goes beyond the last week with data. So we want to avoid that. So to avoid that, we'll have the latest week with views. And we'll calculate the maximum of the views for the week since publication. So in our fact table, uh, where the publish date is greater than the date cutoff for all of the videos. And we're going to compare this to the selected week, which will just be the selected value of the week since publication. We then take the result, which will be a calculate of the average x, Iterating over the videos by title, where we compute the views since publication. And we only want to do this for the videos where the publication date is greater than the date cutoff for all the videos. We then finally finish with a conditional statement saying if the selected week is greater than the latest week with views, return blank, otherwise return our result. And if we add this average, we can add it to the line chart, but in that we can only be selecting a single video, so we'll select a single video here. We'll remove the video title from the legend and add the average views since publication. And we can see that we have this comparison. And the reason why this video is going so much farther than this one is because, of course, with the date cutoff, we've limited it to a specific range of dates. If we wanted to, we could extend this date cutoff to 2020, for example, and that line would continue even further. So if we want to, we can leave it as 2020. Uh, but what we could also do is we could have an additional slicer 
which will then filter for the week since publication. We'll format this as a whole number. And we will have the slicer be less than or equal to. So we're only going to look at the last 56 weeks, for example. So the first 56 weeks. Or we could even look at the first eight weeks, so the first two months after publication, uh, or even longer. So this is a really nice, easy way for us to be able to compare the videos. So when we create a standardized comparison by looking at the week since publication instead of the date, we end up with a much better idea of how our videos are performing compared to each other and compared to the average. The next thing we're going to do is make some small adjustments to our DAX as well as the visual itself to really take it to the next level to make sure also that we're not able to get nonsense results when we're selecting multiple videos, but also to make sure that this is as useful as possible for the people using our report. So the reason why we want to make these adjustments is because when we are selecting multiple videos, for instance, either holding control or filtering to nothing, we end up with a comparison that doesn't bring any value. It doesn't make any sense. So what we want to do is we want to first go into the slicer settings and force single selection. And then we want to swap out our DAX measure with one that has uh, some additional um, modifications to it. So we'll create an additional DAX measure and we'll call it views since publication for the selected title. And this will be similar to what we did with the average where we have the latest week with views, which is just the maximum of the week since publication from the fact table. And we're going to compare this to the selected week, which is the selected value from the week since publication. And we will also have a single video selected which is has one value for the video title. We'll then basically just have a condition that says if uh, the single video is selected and we are not having the selected week greater than the latest week with views, then we want to return our result, which is our view since publication. We'll use this new measure instead of our original view since publication. We'll remove it and add the new measure that we just created. And the benefit is if we didn't have the slicer set up like the way we have it now, so if we didn't have single select and we selected multiple, then it wouldn't show the results. So this way we're protecting nonsense from being able to be visible in the report. So, uh, so that's the benefit, that's the added benefit. Uh, it also makes sure that we're not showing any data if it goes beyond when there's not any data available. So in this case, for example, the dark blue video, uh, this is the last point at which there's data available in the 57th week. So we just stop drawing the line after there. We don't have it continue as the flat line, which makes it easier to understand where we are right now. So we'll then do some formatting changes to the line chart. First, we're going to give it a better title. We will just call it uh, Cumulative Views by Weeks Since Publication. And we'll add the video title to the small multiples. If we do that, it will give us some uh, a better title here. Uh, so with one row and one column. So that way, Whatever video is selected, we can immediately see which video is available. So what the specific context is, that makes it a little bit clear for users who are performing the analysis in the report, and it's also dynamic. So that way, whatever video is selected, it's always going to be shown at the top underneath our title and our legend. So then we want to rename our series for the average. Uh, average, we'll call it, and then selected video and we'll disable the legend and instead have it as series labels 
where we color the series the same as what we'll color the lines. So the average is going to be gray, and the selected video will be blue. We'll want to do the same thing to the lines, where the average will be gray, and the selected video will be blue. And for the average, we'll also make it a um, dotted line, just so it's easier to differentiate from the selected video that we're looking at. So in this way, we with these additional improvements, makes it easier to tell what we're looking at, what is the selected video, what is the average, and what this specific video is. Maybe one additional adjustment we can make is for the small multiple title, we can make that blue as well. So we'll, we'll do the same thing here. That way it's consistent. So depending on whatever video we're selecting, we can immediately see what the video is and we can see how it's performing compared to the average. So to conclude, when you want to compare two series that are not running in parallel, for example, when they have a different start date, it's important to standardize that comparison. In this example, what we did is we looked at the weeks since when the video was published, but you could also look at the days or a different time unit compared to when the event began. This allows you to perform a much better comparison and to get a better idea of how things are evolving over time instead of just using a standard time series. If you use this approach, a good way to do it is by using a line chart, and you can compare not only two different series together, but also comparing to the average. This can be very valuable depending on the circumstance and your data. Enjoy DAX. Mm -hmm.